very very good morning every now and then we get hurt i may trip and fall down i may nick my finger with a little knife or a blade i may hit a part of my body against something what do we do we decide whether it is superficial whether it is very you know shallow wound and if so we say it will heal by itself i need not do anything that's the beauty of the body that the moment there is some trauma to any part of the body the process of healing automatically sets in so you decide yes i fell down and my leg is paining how bad is the pain sometimes i can't decide so i tell somebody that you know i fell down an hour back and my leg is still paining and that person says oh is it like this is it like that that person is little more knowledgeable the person says no i think this is pretty bad i think you better go to a doctor if i say that there's a shooting pain which is just not going away they say no no don't waste your time going to a doctor go to the hospital go straight to the emergency they will probably take an x-ray this that they will determine what has to be done and let's start the treatment because if you neglect it it may get worse so that's what happens with physical wounds <clears throat> if it is shallow if it is uh, you know not very deep or not extremely painful we sometimes say time is the best healer sometimes we put a bandage sometimes we just wash it off and say yes as i told you the body is got excellent means of you know healing itself even if you have cut yourself and blood is coming out you can actually watch within no time the bleeding stops it clots and there's a little bit of a scar over there and the bleeding is gone the pain reduces after a day or two if you look at it even that scar which had formed over there that drops off and there'll hardly be any mark left you won't even know that you had cut your uh, hand or whatever part of the uh, body on the other hand if my wound is so deep that it cuts a vein or an artery obviously i have to immediately rush because the bleeding will not stop in fact the bleeding may be so much that i may bleed to death so i have to do something about it no that is how it happens in physical hurts now unfortunately we do not uh, you know look at it from the same way when we have mental hurts when we are hurt mentally emotionally we do not you know look at it in the same way as we would look at a physical hurt and there's a reason for uh, it the first uh, you know uh, reason is unlike bodily uh, you know matters matters of the mind do not have any diagnostics i told you that if i have you know hurt my leg and it is paining very badly when i go to the hospital they take an x ray and they check out whether the bone is broken so the moment they see an x ray and they realize that the bone is broken they know that it's a serious matter you can't just neglect it and the interesting part is that the doctor will even show that x ray to the patient or the caregiver whoever is there and say here i'll put up this x ray against this bright light you have a look see this was the bone this is where it should be and you see this gap over here this is how the bone has broken and therefore we have to do these 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 and the doctor says it may require you to be in a cast for 6 weeks or 3 months after that also you'll have to be careful you'll have to do physiotherapy or i'm putting some nut and bolt into that where it is uh, you know fractured so after quite some time you'll have to come back and then i'll remove that nut and bolt and we immediately nod our heads and say yes doctor whatever you say i'll do but when it comes to emotional hurts either we become experts and we say i know what it is i can handle it or worse than that we ignore uh, it now these are some of the things which i you know i wanted to uh, highlight when there is an emotional hurt something very painful some major trauma something which is not the what i have been used to in my day to day life something which has perhaps 
happened to me for the first time or worse than that if it has happened to me for a second or third time then i'm already carrying that uh, hurt and that pain of previous you know trauma and this gets added uh, to it so what happens haven't you noticed that if you tell a person that you know there has been a death of somebody whom i loved the person asks you when did it happen if you say yesterday they will immediately pull up a chair sit next to you and say how are you coping with it what are you feeling how bad is it are you able to cope if i say one week say yeah this must have been a very bad week for you no it must be still hurting you even though one week has gone past if i say one month ah okay one month has gone past i think by now you must be feeling better no you must be coping have you got back to your routine are you doing everything properly are you you know taking care of yourself and moving on with uh, uh, life if i say 3 months or 1 year people say what are you talking about it happened one year back and you're still feeling hurt you're still feeling pulled down how can that be yaar come on move on don't be depressed don't sit and cry like this it happened i know it happened it must have been very bad but by now it should have healed no come on move on help yourself get up go and get involved in work do this do that people start giving unwanted advice without realizing that if the pain is there the pain is there if i'm still feeling the hurt of something that happened one year back or 10 years back it is a genuine feeling because i cannot quantify that feeling i cannot show an x ray or a blood report to show how badly i am hurt mentally people do not believe in it okay generally behavioral scientists tell us that this process of grieving you know when you go through a very very bad uh, time or some uh, major uh, loss uh, starts the uh, the healing process starts after let's say a month or so it uh, slowly keeps going down then the anniversary comes when it is going to be a year since that you know loss or that trauma took place it again increases after the anniversary is over in the 13 14 15th month it starts coming down in majority of the cases in 18 months it should be gone but who decides that should if i am hurt i am hurt if i am still grieving i am still grieving nobody else can decide on my behalf right now what happens as far as you know symptoms are con- concerned if i have had a major loss i become what we call as listless you know a little numb a little feeling of you know not wanting to do uh, anything there's this sadness which keeps on and on chasing me all the time i lose pleasure of things in life which i used to uh, uh, enjoy sometimes i make it very irritable and angry particularly with my loved ones i have insomnia i don't get good sleep at times i get nightmares when i do go to uh, sleep there's a yearning inside me how long should i suffer why is this happening to me how long will this pain last why am i suffering uh, so much and all these things are supposed to reduce and that is why people have this proverb which is not always acceptable that time is the best healer no time does not always heal and i the person who is suffering knows whether i am healing or not that is what i want you to start off with uh, you know uh, understanding so if there has been some uh, you know uh, trauma something has really gone wrong i have had a very bad you know uh, uh, setback i need to know after some time whether i am healing or uh, not otherwise we are you know we unless we are willing to process 
our deep rooted irrational beliefs about ourselves you know sometimes we say things like i am not good enough i am useless i could not manage this i am not lovable and all those uh, you know thoughts can be quite debilitating if we uh, go through and if the symptoms sometimes even remain dormant sometimes you will hear people saying that yes i went through this very very bad time for some time i was suffering very badly but now i am able to ignore it i have got busy with my work with my relationships with everything else so it's not hurting me so much the same person one day will tell you you know yesterday such and such thing happened i was in this gathering or i met so and so or such an incident took place and all those old memories came tumbling out i felt miserable for one day two days one week whatever then i slowly managed to get busy again and i have you know started ignoring that and i've started distracting my mind and i've gone away now what does that mean that means that you're only suppressing the pain you're burying it alive so anything which is buried alive will obviously make efforts to dig its way out isn't it and that is what happens with the pain so if you really want to check out whenever you have gone through some you know trauma or something very very severe not just the ordinary small things which we face every now and then but something very major if there has been a setback and some time has gone past if i want to know am i really healing is time healing me am i actually have i been able to overcome or am i uh, suppressing it so what i did was that i made five six points for as a sort of checklist how do you find out whether you are healing or not and as every week anis has converted that into a small bit of nice slides with the little pictures on it so here you are signs that you are healing through your trauma what are those uh, uh, signs firstly this acceptance that you have been through something very difficult i accept that there has been a big trauma that big you know set back something very bad has happened to me then you allow yourself to go inward with peace i don't run away from it people who run away saying i don't want to talk about it it's over yaar it's done with i have moved on i don't want to talk about it no thirdly you welcome support i'm so glad that you are willing to stand by me or to help me or to give me that little support you know how if i have broken my leg how i welcome somebody who is holding my hand when i'm walking so that i don't stumble and fall down same way we need mental support and the question is am i nurturing my mind and my body or am i neglecting it both mind and body they are very closely interconnected and am i aware of expectations of the present and the future at present what is my life offering me and where is my future where am i going ahead can i look forward to it and then you have experienced the ebbs and flows you know the ups and downs there are days when i felt very miserable there are days when i felt little better if you have actually gone through those uh, things these are some of the very clear indicators that yes i am healing like how in a physical wound you know you look at it has the bleeding stopped is the pain reducing so you know straight away yes it is healing i don't think i need to go to a doctor it's just a matter of few more days and everything will be all right so if you know that for a fact then it is uh, uh, you know yeah, fine but if that is not the case if i am not healing then we have to confront the pain the bad memories the trauma without running away from uh, it it is an unpleasant task i must caution uh, you it's far easier to try to ignore and distract your mind and get away but that is like the person you know who indulges in some addiction he drink drink some alcohol and he says okay now i am feeling better you know as long as i am under the influence of alcohol i am feeling better or people do binge watching of some movies and serials and this and that 
and they say that my mind has got absorbed. But you know, any of these type of activities are only postponing. Sometimes it can be even be you know worse. And if I don't do that, then what happens is that it may continue to linger. It may be worse also. Also, keep in mind that we cannot erase anything from the mind. I can't say I will forget it. You know that uh, proverb, forgive and forget, as though, you know, I've got a, a key by which I switch off my mind and I say, okay, I've forgotten about it. It doesn't uh, uh, work. Even if I try to push it aside, distract myself and, you know, go ahead, it can affect and it can affect other areas of your life. You can go into some form of depression, you can lose your confidence, you may go into self-esteem, uh, um, all that. So please ask yourself, have I truly healed or am I just distracting myself? And remember that trauma manifests itself into both your body and your mind. They are so closely connected. Now, if you find that, no, that it, the, I do need some external help. I do need to go through that healing process. So here is a series of pointers. You select which are relevant to you, which are you know, applicable to you, and which you are willing to practice for the actual healing to take place. So let's start with the first uh, uh, one, that is, to notice how you are feeling and what you are thinking. I keep telling even our counseling and DCS students, no, please keep doing this exercise regularly. What am I thinking? What am I feeling? Am I able to differentiate between thinking and uh, feeling? So that is our first step and a precondition to start the healing process. Then simple things, value yourself. Treat yourself with kindness and respect. Avoid self-criticism. These are things which will help you to start becoming more balanced. Take care of your body. Do some movement, exercise. Take care of yourself physically and improve your mental health. Surround yourself with good people, positive people, compassionate and caring people. And then give yourself, what will you give yourself? Give yourself how to, you know, deal with the stress, learn how to deal with stress. Quieten your mind. If your mind is all the time turbulent, thoughts are constantly there. There are innumerable methods. I need not tell you. You can do meditation. You can do yoga. You can do pranayama. You can do deep breathing. You can do what is known as mindfulness. You select the method, but make sure that you quieten down your mind, slow down your mind. Even set realistic goals. Sometimes if I have set very high goals, no, I have to recover, I have to do this, I have to move on, I have to complete this. No, don't do that. Take it slow and uh, easy. Similarly, break up the monotony. If there is a lot of monotony in your life, no, repetitive things, then you will keep continuing to hurt. Develop a positive attitude, easier said than done. Here I am hurting, I've got pain, and you're saying be positive. Yes, it is difficult, but it is not impossible. It takes time. It takes a lot of effort. You may start with some positive thinking. Again, you may go back to negative thinking. Doesn't matter. Pick yourself again and again start developing this positive attitude. Physical activity, as I keep reminding you, mind and body are interconnected. If you are physically active, you will find that your mind is healing at a faster level. The same way as I told you that, you know, you should build your self-esteem and you should, you know, look inward. Pamper yourself. 
give yourself some small nice treats you have so many people who when they are hurt and when they are upset don't you pamper them don't you take care of them don't you do small gestures to them do the same to yourself connect with others seek you know counseling if it is uh, uh, necessary do not hesitate to ask for support from the right people this also i will caution you if you reach out to the wrong people you are going to be in trouble they'll make matters worse for you so please be very selective here is something very interesting volunteering work regardless of which profession you are in what activity is whatever you may be extremely busy also take out some time to do what we call as volunteering that means giving of yourself not giving money or gifts or you know uh, clothes or what food giving of yourself that is the true volunteer two hours a week doesn't take much effort to make, uh, make out that much time but if you do that volunteering when you see other people in distress and when you take up the role of a person who is reaching and giving out your helping hand and gi giving them support you will realize that you definitely feel better your healing is faster one more factor which people don't give sufficient importance to is sleep when you do not have proper sleep your healing slows down use whatever means but ensure that you get proper sleep similarly stay hydrated many of us don't even realize that we are chronically dehydrated please keep now we are into february summer is starting again days are getting hotter and our body needs more and more of water and liquids you'll say how is that connected to my emotional trauma it is it will help you to heal faster crying out preferably with somebody who cares for you who is important uh, to you let your tears flow talk it over with somebody you will definitely feel better and it will hasten up your healing process so these are some of the very basic fundamental uh, uh, you know points which i thought i will uh, you know share uh, with you there are so many other uh, ways in which it can be uh, done but as a last uh, thing i just wanted to help you to understand that when some mental trauma or something takes place you know generally there is also this feeling of injustice why me type of thing why did i have this accident why did i have this uh, loss or bereavement why is it that i uh, you know had to break up this relationship when you start thinking that way start going to a slightly higher plane i'm not a very spiritual or a religious person i don't want to even comment on that but just a little bit of what i would call as higher thinking which is reflected by your values when you value yourself when you uphold certain values you will realize that uh, you know you are in a much better uh, position so what do i mean by values as i said i'm not talking spirituality i'm just saying simple things like let us select which are the ones which are most important uh, uh, to you i've just given a few examples be kind and caring to others your mental healing becomes faster being helpful to others somebody needs a little bit of help without any expectation without wanting anything in return just do a good deed and help that uh, uh, person being brave is a very great value having that you know courage to be able to face things similarly hard working whatever responsibilities are there whatever tasks are there not running away from it not procrastinating and postponing when you are dutiful and when you are hard working when you put in all the efforts at the end of the day you feel that i am worthy i have done something and that again helps you in the healing process okay 
pick one small way that you can act according to these values in the next week. Let's start off straight away. I'm not saying that you should have necessarily gone through a major trauma, but all of us, as we grow, spend more and more time in this world, we do have some negative experiences, some ups and downs and all that. So it's always better to do that healing process because tomorrow, if by chance you suffer something bad, you are already equipped how to handle it. So pick one of those which I wrote in that uh, list of values or add your own, think of your own and ask yourself, what will I do? How will I do it? What will I tell the um, other people? Remember that I'm talking about very tiny actions. I'm talking about very minimal things. I'm not talking about great, you know, social service or uh, doing something very uh, you know, noticeable or something. Very, very small uh, things. And you will realize that tiny actions do matter. And if you do it on a continuous basis, it is like one, one drop that keeps adding on. And thereby, you know, that overall thing happens that you feel that, yes, I have been able to achieve uh, something. I have been able to do uh, uh, something. So what I do, if you have noticed throughout those of you who have been attending these sessions or even looking them up later, what I do is I try to consolidate. I take up an issue like this, for example, you know, that healing after a major trauma or a setback. I throw some food for thought. That time is not necessarily a good healer. You can't just say that, yes, after some time, the pain will go away and I will feel better. It may actually happen, but that may be a placebo effect. That may be only temporary till something triggers it off and then it comes and hits you. So when you understand that, I try to give you based on my experience and the experience of so many people whom I keep meeting and interacting with on a day to day uh, basis. What are the ways and means that you can acquire to move forward, to chalk out the right path, to take the right decisions? And most important, to ensure that you are still walking on the, that path. Even if you stumble and fall down, go to the side, sit down, rest, recharge your energy. As I said, get rehydrated and then, uh, you know, move on. I remembered once we were going on a highway, it was extensive rain and visibility was down to zero. And there was this vehicle which came from behind and hit us. Fault was of the other driver. But what happened was that we were all very badly shaken up. But they were hurt. Their windshield shattered and uh, uh, two of the people sitting in the front of that vehicle were hurt. So we took the car to the side. And my host, who was driving the car, he requested us that please get down. I will take these people to the hospital and drop them there and come back. And we were very badly shaken up in the middle of nowhere. We were just sitting uh, uh, there and we saw one hut type of thing. And we went under the shelter because it was raining and we were sitting there. And believe me, five minutes later, that lady who lives in a hut, such a poor woman, she came with a cup of tea for each one of us. And she refused to take money for it also. It was such a soothing thing. That trauma that we went through, that suddenly here is this car which has come and hit us and what is happening and what's happening to those people who have been taken to hospital. I hope nothing goes wrong with them because we will feel guilty or we'll feel miserable that, you know, we were involved in an accident where somebody died or somebody had a major trauma and all that. So that time went off so nicely. In fact, we were chatting with that lady. We were just asking her and she was asking what happened and all these things. And before you know it, the person you know dropped them and came back saying that, yes, doctor has taken over there. And, uh, you know, he said nothing wrong. He is bandaging or he's doing whatever it is. Come, we'll get into the car and we will uh, move on. So this is what I meant by saying you look for such opportunities, right? And with that, it's exactly 11.30. So I invite Sonal to come and just update you on what's happening with us. And I'll be back in a minute.
Yeah. Hello everyone, Saturday morning, good morning. And to, I just came to update you what all is happening at Banjara and understanding the concern of parents. Exam season is going on, right? So study skill set Banjara is offered free. Just to tell you, remind you that anybody whom you feel needs that support and help or wants to talk, we are there or wants help in how to study, last minute study also, there is some anxiety, some stress, please feel free to get in touch with us. We are there to help you. Yeah. Then our DCS admissions have already started, enrollment have already started. DCS 24 is on the roll. And on 18th, the next Saturday morning, you will have your Facebook Live. But in the evening, we have a webinar and uh, as you all are very interested in listening to Ali, you can get your link. You will have to call up office for your link for the 18th evening, 4 to 5. And the topic is human touch in this world of technology. The importance of human touch. Yeah, interesting, right? Get in touch with us and you will get the link. And some more programs, it's not over here. What's coming up is uh, communication and presentation uh, skills, CPCS is coming up, which is a classroom course, which will be of three, 13, 12 or 13 uh, sessions will be there. And how do you present yourself? You know, nowadays so many school counseling jobs are opening up. And they tell you to give a demo and something. And you are like, I am not confident enough. You want to go and do that. Or you want to be a soft skill trainer. Or anywhere you want to give a public speech and you feel that you are not that equipped enough. Or if you find someone who is looking for something like this. It's a classroom course. So please spread this word. Get in touch with office. Then... When vacation starts in April, Young Zen Blossoms is also coming up. That also is again for children who wants to learn different life skills, enjoy those 15 days, but take away something solid with them. Yeah. Then uh, Manthan, which is coming up on 24th of uh, February. Manthan is always welcome, right? You all who are working online with us or coming up online with us, please try to come and understand skills to build close relationships, offline and online, both. <laughs> because nowadays we have so many uh, relationships where, you know, we don't meet often, but we do chat, we send mails and, you know, you want to keep in touch. How do we go about it and how do we make it meaningful? And while you come for this session, if you have pets, we do have facilities for your pets also to be taken care of. Off Leash is our Manthan associate, I would say. There is a place made for the dogs and there's a swimming pool exclusively made for the dogs. Sounds interesting, no? Yes. So if you have your pets along, you can bring along and your dog will be taken care of. That's from me and over to Ali for you on 18th, the next Saturday. If you want the uh, link, please get in touch with the office or you want to know any information about the upcoming programs that I have given, please get in touch with our front office. Either Jennifer or Anis will be able to help you out. Thanks a lot, Somal. Incidentally, third uh, Thursday of the month is our Chintan, where we get together face to face, not online like this. And we have uh, our of nice uh, 
you know uh, interaction and this time next thursday it is going to be on dealing with shame so those of you who are in bangalore or who want to come please do come and join us for that one hour on next thursday that is between 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock so let me start off now i've been glancing at a lot of very interesting points which have been put on the chat box let's start with asha in the business of everyday life where does the words being too good stand it's always relative no asha when we say too good who decides what is too good that's the interesting thing about you know mental health and about uh, you know issues which are to do with the mind there's no barometer if we talk about wealth we can say how much money do i need to run a household as a middle class person i need x th thousands per month how much money do i need for petrol if i am running a two wheeler it is different if it's a four wheeler it is uh, different so these are all measurable but when we say too good there is absolutely no barometer by which we can check and say this is too good that is not too good that is three good or something no? yes akila it's very very difficult to be positive when you are in pain trying hard to practice it incidentally akila haven't you noticed that it's easier to be positive when you are in physical pain if you have some friends uh, with you somebody to hold your hand somebody to you know make the moment lighter you can actually reduce your physical uh, pain with this thing of the mind over body but i agree with you that when the mind is hurt when the mind is pulled down it's extremely difficult and that's the reason why we have these interactive sessions like these to help us to introspect and think what are the ways and means that i have tried what are the ways and means i should try isn't it florence says good morning dr ali seeking help should not uh, should be not from self righteous people who say because of your bad choice you are in trouble oh yes florence left right and center we see people who very you know happily keep uh, passing judgment it is your karma you must have done something bad in your past life you have been this you are that that is why you are suffering please 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 keep away from such people nobody can pass this sort of judgment and there is nothing to say that if i am hurt or upset or traumatized now it is because of my karma that is something far beyond us but yes i would definitely say keep away from such people and keep in touch with positive people right roshan says volunteering is a very satisfying experience especially when you have faced difficulties and challenges all by yourself without any emotional support or understanding exactly that's what i mentioned earlier also that when you do some volunteering work when you reach out to somebody else be it in an orphanage be it in a hospital you know that we have our services in hospitals and you're most welcome to come and join the team of volunteers in any hospital out of the eight nine hospitals where we work uh, in you can join us and you can you know do some good work if nothing else a couple of hours in a week that's all we are uh, uh, you know expecting from you but it really makes a difference to your mental setup you start realizing that there are people who are suffering so my suffering is not that bad i can manage it right akila says i agree when we reach up to someone and support them emotionally it gives us a great amount of satisfaction it's a beautiful experience you have to actually experience it and see you know like akila said and like so many other people roshan also said just now we have about 200 300 volunteers and you ask any one of them they'll say i don't know how useful i was to others how much good i did to others but one thing that i know is i am feeling much better because i did volunteering or because i did volunteering for so many years when some trauma hit me my ability to you know accept that and to be able to cope with that increased because i have been seeing other people suffering i have been reaching out to other people and finally also that if you have been reaching out to people somebody or the other people will reach out to you when you are going through something and you need not feel lonely ha <sighs> Florence says power nap and drinking some water slowly. Yes, uh, Florence, this is something which one of my teachers had taught me long back. Do not gulp water, sip water. I tell that to you know students studying for exams also. Keep a bottle of water, keep a glass, pour uh, you know water into the glass, and every now and then as you are studying, just lift up the glass and sip 
you know, a few uh, sips of water. Continue like that till the whole bottle gets empty, refill it, and then continue uh, again. These are small things, but very useful things, right? Sri Devi says, you are reminding me of Mother Teresa, who says that poor people are good. Yes, poor people, people who are suffering, people you know who are going through trauma, sometimes they can be your best friends, you know, because they are so sensitive, they are so understanding, they are so caring. So people who have been poor, not only financially poor, but have also been poor in terms of the way life has dealt uh, issues to them and how they have suffered that way also. People, many of them, I'm not saying all of them, but they do tend to be more empathetic and more understanding. Roshan said learning new things like Hindustani classical music and learning to play on the guitar gives me a very peaceful and soothing effect to my mind. Of course, swimming is my passion that keeps me alive and happy. See how everyone has to find their own way. You cannot replicate what somebody else is doing. You cannot just say, oh, so many people are doing this particular activity and that's become very popular and that is trending now. So I will do it. No, find your own uh, way. Experiment. Try out different things. Whenever you come to know about something new, try that out and see. If it doesn't work, shelve it. If it works, Keep increasing it and see how it is beneficial to you. Vinita says, good morning Ali and Team Manjara. Sometimes I feel just be there with the person in this process of healing. Any kind of trauma, as you said earlier, silence is magical. Yes, being there with that person when that person is going through you know, a very bad phase of life or is trying to recover from some major setback or trauma or whatever has happened to that person just being there and this i have noticed every time when there is a bereavement you know when the, somebody has really lost a loved one i make it a point to go and sit very close to him and keep quiet if it is socially acceptable i hold the hand or i put my arm around the shoulder that's it I don't have to say words, but people do feel that healing does, you know, get accelerated by these small gestures. Surika says, time does not heal anything. It merely passes. It numbs the pain, Surika. It just sort of, you know, makes you feel that, yeah, I've been suffering for such a long time. Yeah, it's not as bad as before. But yes, I agree with you that it does not heal. It's what we do during the passive of time that helps or hinders the healing process, which also I would you know, agree and expand saying that people who try to run away from it, I told you, you know, people who have addictions, not only to alcohol or some substances, it could be addiction to work. I know people who, when they feel that they are traumatized, they just, you know, drown themselves with work. Morning to night, they are working. And they say, as long as I'm working, I don't feel bad. So I want to work more and more. No. I don't think that's a solution. I think, in, in fact, you are increasing it. Because that's only a distraction. That's only a numbing of your senses. Look for something more, you know, long-term and beneficial. So, Sri Devi says, DCS gave me confidence to reach out to anyone, even a stranger. Thanks a ton. Yes, we have to find our own ways. Almost all of our DCS students of the past so many years, we have completed 25 years now of uh, uh, DCS. People have always been saying that. That is why I say that, you know, prevention is better than cure. So some of these things, if you have taken the trouble to attend this uh, you know, workshop or if you are participating in it or even if you are watching it later, Remember that it's like an investment that you are making for something that may happen, may happen later. So be it, this is like putting up a fire extinguisher in your office or home. It is like putting some money in a fixed deposit so that when I suddenly run short of money, I can always find it. That's what we need to do, right? Sri Devi Srinivas says, Ali, I came across a girl who lost both her grandparents in the same year. And the impact of loss stays fresh even after 15 years. The fear of losing loved ones persists. Yes, that's exactly what I've been telling today. That if we do not actively do something about the healing process, 
it just remains sometimes it even gets worse and many times it affects our other relationships and our other areas of life like the simple thing which today we said about uh, you know uh, uh, feeling the threat of losing somebody else so when i lost one grandparent i lost another grandparent i start looking at my parents and say when are they going to go if they go away what's going to happen to me i even look at a small child and i say you know what if something happens to this child what if this child dies so all this happens because i have not been able to resolve the trauma that i went through when i lost two of my very beloved people and that is why today's session we are trying to give you some tips Rajeshwari says it's very difficult to heal when someone very close to you hurts you. And like you said, it's easier to distract yourself, which I had done. And suddenly something similar happened and everything came crashing, shocking me. I thought I had healed, but now I am going through major trauma, working various things to heal. Today's topic is so apt for me, will surely work this time to completely heal. Yes, Rajeshwari, please go ahead and do it. And I would only comment on your last word, complete healing. No, that will never happen, Rajeshwari. Let's accept it. Let's not look at perfection in life. It's like, you know, the prince and princess married and lived happily ever after. That never happens, no? So the same way, the healing cannot be complete. So if you have gone through a major trauma, you start this process, you heal 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, be happy with that. Surika says, time just creates more distance, more space between you and what happened. Yeah, sometimes, you know, the images get a little dull, where you could easily visualize that person or whatever, the good times. And you also have this horrifying images of what happened, whether it was a loss, whether it was a breakup, whether it was whatever uh, it is. Over time, you know what happens, the images get dull. They get a little hazy. But that does not mean that the impact on your mind has reduced. In fact, it creates a lot of confusion also when it becomes hazy, no? You're not very sure what uh, uh, happened. I've had people telling me, that I went through such, such great trauma when I was a child. But now I'm thinking, did it really happen? Yes, it did happen. Otherwise, you would not have remembered it. Only thing is that the image may be blurred, but that is not healing, right? Anita says, when we share our painful experiences, how does healing happen? Yes, it is one part of the uh, you know, healing. That is that I am not alone. I'm not choking. You will notice, Anita and the others, that when you are recalling that uh, you know horrible thing that happened, you're feeling that choking feeling. You're feeling that uh, you know claustrophobic uh, uh, feeling. Even though physically there's nobody choking you or nobody you know put, butting you in between, but mentally you start feeling as though you are cornered. And when you talk to somebody, now that has to be somebody really well chosen. Remember, it should not be somebody who says. Okay, ma, it's okay, it happened, no, go ahead. Don't you have faith in God? God will do the best for you. Why do you think like this? And all? No, not such people. You have to share with somebody who truly understands you, cares for you, and is willing to commit that time for you. Then the healing really helps. Of course, you have to do a lot of other things also. But this facilitates and smoothens and hastens the process of healing. Dr. Shirin says... Healing depends on if your life has been one long line of happiness punctuated by suffering or one long line of suffering punctuated by happiness. Very true. Each one of us have our own experiences, isn't it? But one thing I can tell you is people who had a very long line of only happiness, when something bad happens, their ability to deal with it comes down. And that is what we teach even in our DCS and other programs, that you are learning about other people's misery without actually going through it. So you visit an orphanage, you visit an old age home, you visit a hospital for palliative care of cancer uh, patients, you visit a place where there are mentally ill uh, people. So you know the realities of life 
And therefore, when something negative happens, our ability to deal with it improves as compared to a person who has led a very clean, neat, nice and happy life. And therefore, it comes as a major shock when something goes uh, wrong. So keep that in mind. If life is going smoothly, look for areas where you can learn about the healing process. Ah, Yashoda is here. Welcome, Yashoda. Time does not heal. How you take the situation and proceed makes a lot of difference. I thank you, Ali. DCS has strengthened me to handle the situation and to do service to mankind. Yes, Yashoda is doing excellent work for people who are underserved, you know, people who are neglected in society and all that. She reaches out so wonderfully to people, particularly in the rural areas and all that thing. So when you do these sort of things like what Yashoda is doing, you know, it gives you such tremendous satisfaction and such solace and such serenity that it helps you to deal with the negative things that are happening to you in life or certain negative memories where you suffered earlier and still that pain is remaining but when you see others pain when you reach out to people it is one of the best ways to be able to deal with your own life that's what i said about volunteering also roshan says in a place like hyderabad there is no understanding of knowledge of mental health with the result. I have lost great amount of money with zero result. And the patients in the hospital are beaten up with a stick that my loved one was beaten up so badly that her gash had to be mended by calling an anesthetist and then suturing her chin. It's a shame on the doctor's part how they neglect their patient. Yes, ignorance is one of the things, you know, uh, callousness or uh, insensitivity. We come across this. And that's one of the reasons why I always say that, you know, when you select somebody, whether it is a doctor for the healing process, whether it's a friend to talk to, whether it's a counselor, please be very careful. It is not just the qualifications or the experience of the person. See, we tend to go by that, oh, so-and-so is highly qualified in this field. So-and-so holds a string of degrees and this and that. So that person should be good. No. I think by now all of us are aware of our education system that while it does a wonderful work of giving us a solid grounding, but it is not necessarily a indication that at a practical level this person is competent. So when I select somebody, be it a doctor, be it a therapist, be it a friend, I should see the human angle of it. I should see whether that person is actually competent to give me the right type of support that I want, the human element, forget about everything else. I know, for example, so many general physicians who have an MBBS degree and nothing more, which nowadays, you know, they say, with just an MBBS, what can you do? But they are such wonderful doctors. You go to them with any type of thing because of their experience, because of their sensitivity, the way they deal with you, they don't send you for fancy investigation. They don't, you know, make you lose money. They don't unnecessarily put you into surgery. And yet they manage to get the healing. The same thing can happen and does happen when it comes to mental uh, health. If you select the right persons based on the way they connect to you, the way you can connect to them, their sincerity, their compassion and sensitivity, that is when you heal. It can even be friends, I'm not even talking about professionals. Among your group of friends, there will always be somebody who are good to laugh and joke and enjoy uh, with. Good enough. There's nothing wrong. Have such friends around you because they distract you. They make you feel nice for those moments when you are with them. But don't look upon them as true friends who can actually see you through any traumatic uh, you know, phase in your life. For that, you need to have you know, that ability, that uh, you know, selection of uh, uh, people. And that's why I always request to people that there's a belief that I have very strongly that you must try to change when there is no compelling need for you to change. Because if you lead a complacent life and then a trauma happens, and then you suddenly start looking for a change. You may make wrong decisions in your hastiness. But if no emergency is there, 
nothing is you know compelling you right now but you say i must look for a change i tell people that please make a sort of you know uh, data bank or a list of people whom you may need it could be a doctor it could be a psychiatrist it could be a counselor it could be a legal professional if at all the need arises the situation arises where you have to take the help of such a uh, person that time you should not be running around helter skelter and wondering whom to go to and then you may land up with wrong people and the same thing applies to friends also have your friends of convenience but do have one or two very sincere genuine and committed uh, friends who you know you can depend on when you have a very very strong emotional uh, need that is when you will not be hit with this epidemic called loneliness you will be able to breeze through these uh, uh, things and that is what i have been you know telling you florence says ice numbers i didn't get you florence can you expand on the, uh, that so we'll get an idea about what uh, you're saying then uh, based on that i will be able to respond uh, to that but what i wanted to definitely tell you before we wind up today's uh, program is that when people like you come together and i'm not looking at numbers i'm not saying we need thousands and thousands of uh, uh, this thing. oh yes florence uh, you know, I, I now recall, glad you reminded me, Florence. They talk about ICE numbers. That is, ICE is a short form of in case of emergency. So do I have this ICE numbers? Do I have this ICE people around me? If I have an emergency, who is there who will leave everything else and come and be with me? Who is there who can give me the right guidance? Who is there who can give me the right type of emotional support whenever I need this? Who is there who can fulfill if I'm feeling extremely lonely and isolated? So when we say emergency, it is not just medical emergency or something like that. For that, we know where the best you can even call an ambulance and go to the best of hospitals. So like I've told you in the beginning also, that physical uh, ailments and all that people know what to do, how to go about it. Anybody will help you and say, okay, I'll get this ambulance. This is a good hospital nearby and we'll do this. And the doctors are, you know, very competent over there. The moment you go into emergency, they take over and they help you. But the same thing doesn't happen in the areas of mental health. If there's an emotional trauma, if there's a mental trauma, there's no ambulance which can come and take you and there's no emergency department where you can be admitted and where you can be you know, taken uh, care of. In fact, the awareness itself is so low that if a person says that I'm feeling miserable because of this, this, this trauma, as I told you, you know, they just say, it's okay, take it easy, time will heal, you'll get uh, better, all these uh, things. Yes, Vina, I agree with you that counselors are best, but the right counselors are the best. That's what I keep reminding you. Keep in mind that, you know, even selecting a counselor is not that easy. Day in and day out, I come across people who come and say that, you know, I went to a particular counselor and I had a bad experience. Counselor is also human like anybody else. Same way as you go to a doctor and you have a bad experience. The doctor could not heal you. Then you have to go to another doctor. So same thing happens with counselors also. But yes, genuine counselors, counselors who really care and who have been basically trained, not necessarily with some... PhDs and some MPhils or whatever it is, but those who genuinely care and who are there, they are the people to look for. So keep this in mind. And I also have a request. Could you please spread this one or two or three points which you picked up from today's program, either from me or from others who gave their comments on the chat box? Please, you know, work on this. Farida says many times the hurt surfaces later. When it happens, we don't even realize how hard it is. It is. And that is the whole idea of today's workshop to help to prevent you with that. So please spread this message to others, you know, also in whatever little way, one, two, three points, let them also be aware, let them start working on their own and let them continue. And we shall continue next week. Same time, that is Friday, 11 o'clock. And the topic is suffocating and manipulative relationships, how to deal with them. Again, if you are having such a relationship, definitely this will help you. 
even if you are not having it will prepare you in future in case some such relationship turns up so hope to see you again next saturday at 11 o'clock thanks a lot and bye bye Thank you.